Hello, everybody. Today I can create a two-way table using P and not P. So in the previous lesson, we learned how to use a two-way table. Now we're going to be able to create one. So let's just jump into an example. And uh, as it says in the aim here, using P and not P. So each axis is going to be one thing and then not that thing. And the other axis will be one thing and not that thing. It's yes and no for each thing on each axis. In a class of 30 students, there are 16 girls and there are 12 honor students. So the two things that we're comparing are girls and honor students. So one axis is going to be girl and not girl. And the other axis Honors is going to be honors and not honors. Each axis is yes and no for one subject, one category, one variable. And now, you might be saying, well, instead of putting not girl, can I put boy? In general, it's yes and no, because with some things, there might be like a middle ground. So we want to be very clear. It's going to be yes and no. Girl, not girl. Honors, not honors. One of them is going to literally be not or no. Don't forget your table should always have totals. So we're going to add a total column in a row. And this is the bones of our 2A table. I think that's the hardest part. And now from here, we're just going to fill in the values that they give me. So it says there's a class of 30 students. So that means there's a total of 30 students. There are 16 girls. So where is that 16 going to go? Well, that 16 girls has nothing to do with honors or not honors. There's a total of 16 girls. There are 12 honor students. So again, that piece of information right there isn't saying anything about girls. It's just saying that there's a total of 12 honor students. If there are 10 honor students that are girls, so 10 honor students are girls. That's saying that 10 are both girls and honor students. Create a two-way frequency table to represent the situation. So now I need to just fill in the rest. I'm going to use a different color to do that, just since this is what I'm given and the rest I'm going to be filling in. It's basically just going to be addition and subtraction to fill in the missing pieces. So I'm looking uh, here right now. If there's 10 girls and honors and 16 total, I would subtract 16 and 10 to get 6. Here, I would subtract 10 and 12. Here, I would subtract 30 and 12. Here, I would subtract 8 and 16. I'm sorry, 18 and 6. And here, I can either add the 2 and the 12 or subtract the 16 and the 30 and get 14. So once you have the bones of it, once you have the information you're given, you're just going to add and subtract pieces to fill in the missing pieces. That's what's new for this lesson. Yes and no for one thing on one axis. Yes and no for the other thing on the other axis. Put the pieces of information into the table. Again, if it says there are 16 girls, that means there are 16 total girls. So that goes for the total for girls. 12 honor students, that's the total for honors. 10 are honors and girls. So this cell represents honors and girls. And then again, I, I fill in the missing pieces. Now as a follow-up question, what is the probability that a student is not an honor student given that they are a girl? Key phrase is given that, I'm given that they are a girl. So the condition is that they're a girl. I'm only looking at the girls. Out of the 16 girls, how many are not in honors? Six out of 16. <clears throat> if it asked me to make it into a percent, I could divide them and multiply by 100. We can do that just for practice. Six divided by 16. And times 100, so it would be 37.5%. But again, it's not asking that. It's just asking uh, for the probability, so we can leave it as a fraction. 
So again, the objective of today's lesson is to create the two-way table. You're going to list yes and no for each category, each thing we're talking about. So girls and not girls, honors and not honors. From there, you fill in the values that they give you, add and subtract or fill in the missing pieces. And so once we have the two-way table, it's the same thing we did in the previous lesson as far as calculating the probabilities. There are 160 practicing physicians in a city, 75 female, 25 pediatricians. So, female pediatricians. A lot of students get confused in this question because we're seeing physicians. They're all physicians. So this question is talking about physicians, but the two things we're looking at are female and pediatricians. So, I want you to take about 20 seconds and let's see if you can fill in what you're supposed to fill in here. As a hint, I'll write what you're not supposed to write. You are not putting female next to pediatrician. That is wrong. You're putting yes and no for one thing on one axis, yes and no for the other thing on the other axis. So take about 10 seconds and see if you can put the right uh, categories on your axes. All right, so we're doing yes and no for each thing. Females, female, not female. Yes and no for each thing, always, when you're creating your two-way table. Pediatricians, yes and no. Pediatrician, not pediatrician. So, we'll add our total column and row in, and now we have the bones of our table. Now we just need to kind of put in the information that it gives me. So there's a total of 160, that's your total total. There are 75 females, so the total females are 75, it doesn't say there's 75 pediatricians, it says there's 75 physicians, 75 total. There's 25 pediatricians, so there's a total of 25 pediatricians. There are 20 female pediatricians, so female and pediatricians is 20. Create a two-way table. I want you to take about 30 seconds right now, and I want you to fill in all the missing cells by subtracting and adding as necessary. So take a 30 seconds right now and see if you can fill in the rest of this table. Okay, 25 minus 20 is 5. 60, I'm sorry, 160 minus 25 is 135, 75 minus 20 is 55, 135 minus 55 is 80, 5 plus 80 is 85, or you could have done 160 minus 75. There's my table. Now that I have my table, what is the probability that a physician is a female, given that they are a pediatrician. So remember, circle the condition. I'm giving you that they're a pediatrician, so we're only looking at the pediatricians. So see if you can take about 10 seconds and see if you can answer that first question from here on your own. Out of the 25 pediatricians, 20 are female. What is the probability that a physician is a pediatrician, given that they are female? I'm going to let you try that one on your own. <clears throat> so try the bottom question on your own. I'll just give you about 10, 15 seconds. All 
Okay. Given that they're female, so I'm only looking at the females. I'm only looking the orange out of the 75 females. 20 are pediatricians. So it's a very different probability depending on what the condition is. Remember, the condition always comes after the phrase given that. You're not going to always see the phrase given that, but if you do see the phrase given that, the condition always comes after. And that's from the previous lesson. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The guidance department has reported that of the senior class, 2.3% are members of Heat Club, 8.6% uh, are enrolled in AP Physics P, and 1.9% are in both. So we're going to create a two-way table. I want you to try and label your axes first. Uh, in fact, why don't you pause, try and create your table, just create your axes. By, act, by that, I mean write these values in and then unpause. Okay, the two things that we're looking at here are key club K and AP Physics P. So we're going to have K and not K and P and not P. It's yes and no for one thing on one axis, yes and no for the other on the other. Now, because we're dealing with percents, if we're dealing with percents, then the total total is going to always be 100. If we're dealing with percents, the total total is going to always be 100. I want you to take about 20 seconds, and I want you to get these values in the right spot. Now, you might be saying, well, do I make the percents into a decimal? There's no reason to do that in this example. Since we're doing everything out of 100, you can leave the percents as the percents. You don't have to do 0 0.0023. You can leave it as 2.3%. So again, take about uh, 20 seconds and get these values into the correct cells. All right, 2.3% are in Key Club. So that doesn't say anything about being in physics. It says 2.3% are in Key Club. So the total for Key Club is 2.3. 8.6% are in AP Physics. Doesn't say anything about Key Club. 8% total are in AP Physics. 1.9% are in both. That's this cell right here. Take about 30 seconds and fill in the rest of that table. I'll give you like a 15 second head start by adding and subtracting. All right, 8.6 minus 1.9 is 6.7. 2.3 minus 1.9 is 0.4. 100 minus 2.3 is 97.7. Use a calculator if you need to. 97.7 minus 6.7 is 91. 0.4 plus 91 is 91.4. And there's your table. Determine the probability of P given K. Given K, that makes K the condition. And it wants it to the nearest tenth of a percent. So once you set up your fraction, you're going to divide it and multiply it by 100. I want you to try that on your own right now. I'll give you about 30 seconds. Okay, I'm given K, so I'm going to circle the condition. The condition is K. I'm only looking at members of the key club. Out of the 2.3%, how many are 
P in physics, 1.9. It wants it as a percent, so I'm going to do 1.9 divided by 2.3. If my calculator turns on, 1.9 divided by 2.3 times 100. It wants the nearest tenth of a percent, so that's 82.6. The principal would like a basic interpretation of these results. Write a statement regarding your calculated probabilities to student enrollment. So, students have trouble writing these sentences. It's not like this is something that really comes up a lot where I really want to worry about it too much, but of course I'll go over this particular question. So, what that 82.6% means is that 82.6% of the seniors in Key Club, since Key Club was the condition, 82.6% of seniors in Key Club. That was the condition. The condition was seniors in Key Club. We were only looking at the seniors in Key, key Club. 82.6% of them are enrolled in AP Physics. That's what P given K means. It means that out of K, the seniors in Key Club, the probability is how many are in AP Physics. 82.6% of the seniors in Key Club are enrolled in AP Physics. That's it. And again, you know, this follow question is a little tricky because I know that students aren't always great with those creating those sentences to represent the situation, but hopefully the objective here was to create the two-way table and the objective of the last lesson was to use that to come up with this. Is there anything more I want to do with you? I mean, not really. Um, so why don't we, why don't you try number five on your own from start to finish and then um, you know, we'll go over it, and then after that, I'll let you on your own. So, for number five, please pause, try number five on your own, and then unpause. Okay, now that you tried number five on your own, the two things that we're dealing with here is Algebra 2 and Sophomores. So, I'm going to do Algebra 2 and not Algebra 2. Sophomores and not sophomores. Whoops. Put an extra row in there. It's always yes and no for one thing, yes and no for the other. Is this a percent here? No, so my total total is not going to necessarily be the percents. So we didn't really talk much about, um, then we haven't really talked at all about Venn diagrams. They don't really come up much in this course, but um, obviously this one is. So here's how this works. 85 are in both Algebra 2 and Sophomore. 985 are neither. The number that's outside here, remember, it's not algebra 2 or sophomore. So not sophomore, not algebra 2 is 985. This 210 is algebra 2, but not sophomores. Because it's in the algebra 2 circle, not in the sophomore circle. So 210, this cell represents algebra 2 and not sophomores. The 320 is sophomores, but not algebra 2. Sophomores, but not algebra 2, is 320. From here, we should be able to fill in the rest of our table by adding and subtracting. 85 plus 210 is 295. 320 plus 985, 5, 0, 
1305. If I add those together, I should probably use a calculator for this. I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake. Hopefully I don't. I believe that's 1600. Uh, I can add across this way. 85 and 320 is 405. 1395, 1295, 1195, 1195. And now I have my table. So um, now the follow up questions. If you didn't do the, if you didn't get this first part, and you want to now pause and do the follow up questions before I go over them. If a student is from the high school is selected at random. What is the probability that the student is a sophomore given that the student is enrolled in Algebra 2? Given that the student is enrolled in Algebra 2, the condition is Algebra 2. So out of the 295 students in Algebra 2, how many are sophomores? 85. Is it asking for a percent? No, it's just asking for the probability. So you would leave it as a fraction. And that's it. Your classwork slash homework is to finish creating two-way tables. And again, the objective of this lesson to create it. If we're talking about algebra two and sophomores, algebra two, not algebra two on one axis. Sophomore, not sophomores on the other. If we're talking about key club and physics, key club, not key club on one axis, physics, not physics on the other. We're talking about females and pediatricians, female and not female, pediatrician and not pediatrician on the other. We're talking about girls and honors, girls, not girls, honors, not honors. Once you have that set up, you're just putting the information in. If it says 16 girls, that has nothing to do with honors. That's your total for girls. So it goes in the total for girls and uh, et cetera. All right. Um, practice, finish it for homework slash classwork, and I hope everybody has a great day.